everybody, and welcome to the Design Well podcast. Today, I am here with Isaac Rosario, VP of Voyager Home Systems, and Jason Price, the owner of our subject for today, which is an absolutely wonderful smart home designed with the utmost accessibility in mind. Um, I am Nicholas Bover. I will be helping out... Um, uh, not so much moderate this time, kind of join in on the conversation to find out more about this custom solution. Um, but first, before we get into it, I'd like Isaac and Jason to introduce themselves. So um, Jason, why don't you start? Well, I'm Jason Price. I'm the lucky homeowner in this scenario. I am uh, someone who lives with a severe disability. I have uh, spastic triplegia and uh, causes me to have great difficulties doing almost anything physical. So I had the idea to develop a sport home in which I could possibly do more independently. And the first problem, Nicholas, was um, finding someone to do that. Luckily, I have, I'm a professional in the disability field and had some resources. So I uh, basically need to find a company who could kind of make my imagination come to life in terms of what the potential was in terms of accessibility. And that company was Voyager. So together we were able to design a smart home that I think is pretty impressive in terms of uh, mobility and, and all around access. And uh, Isaac? Yeah, my name is Isaac Rosario. I'm the VP uh, slash lead programmer here at uh, Voyager Home Systems. We specialize in uh, usually mainly high-end residential custom uh, homes here in the Oklahoma City metro area. Um, been in business here in the, in the metro area for about 30 years. So we go way back with most of the control systems and in, uh, in electronic uh, marketing that. Um, so yeah, uh, we found uh, Jason. He actually reached out to us, and, and that's how we got hooked up together. So, hmm. great. So, I'm assuming you guys um, haven't, uh, you guys uh, didn't really interact with one another before this whole project. Like, you guys didn't never met in the field before. We had not. No, not at all. All right. Uh, so, I guess what was the. Um, Jason, what was one of the reasons that made you reach out to Voyager? What were some of their qualifications that okay. kind of stuck out? I'm glad you asked that, Nicholas. Um, when I first took on this project, I guess you might call me a kind of a tech uh, super novice. I was probably more than a novice, but I wasn't really a professional, obviously. So I kind of had a company that I went with and did some things in my own home that were pretty rudimentary. And when I decided to buy this home and redesign it, uh, I quickly found out that my, the, my initial company wasn't capable of going to the level that I need to go to. So I began to look, smart home was hard to research. It was, it was still kind of in its infancy and um, everything was kind of off the shelf. And so I just started to look around and I found a company called Crestron and Crestron seemed like they were uh, a big player in the home automation game. And I called their PR department and they connected me to a regional rep. And he gave me uh, three companies that they knew of in Oklahoma that were high end. And I interviewed all three companies and uh, Voyager was far and beyond the best choice for me. And, and they were willing to take on some stuff that, uh, just couldn't be done by anybody else, it seems. So I wanted to be able to move about my house as though I am a single bachelor, which I am. I have some caregiver help, but I wanted to do as much as I could possibly do at home. Open doors, do the shower, do you know everything you can think of, the temperature, the locks, the cameras, the technology, the entertainment. So um Voyager wasn't overwhelmed. And uh, they just sit down with me. We started to shake things out. We had a couple of phone meetings. And um, we I think we both learned along the way. We 
we redesigned some things. We did several things that people said probably wouldn't be able to be done, uh, including uh, internal doors. I couldn't find a single company, Nicholas, who wanted to automate uh, residential interior doors. That was a big deal, as was the smart shower. So, uh, and the lights and all of this and that. So, so Voyager was the one that said, uh, we got, we're going to figure this out. And, and several times I thought we were at an Im impasse on a few things. And never once did Isaac say, I agree with you. We can't get this done. He always said, not only are we going to get it done, we're going to get it done pretty simply. You'll be surprised. So it was just an incredible experience. And I, I think we've set a new bar for what accessible living can be like. Because think about this, Nicholas. People that don't have severe disabilities are going to age. They're going to need more access as their life continues. So whole home access, I think, is something that's going to blow up in the future as people continue to, to age. I, I am in full agreement with you on that one. That's actually, I can tell just from uh, working with um, one of the things that Design Well actually works for a lot is uh, senior living. And so we we have seen that a lot with um, accessibility and smart home technology being used as a form of independent living in, able to, in order to enable independent living is a big thing. And I agree with you on that one wholeheartedly. Um, Isaac, I actually kind of going back to what you would just mentioned about some of the um, kind of the, 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 I guess, like the custom built solutions, the um, like the automated doors, for example, um, Isaac, I'm kind of curious and I'm pretty sure any other integrator that might be watching this would be curious, too, as to how you uh, managed to accomplish that. Yeah, uh, I will say in the, in the beginning of the project, I mean, normally in the houses that we do in high end residential it's more of a go in, uh, fill the house up with automation just because it's what they do in the large houses. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just that it needs it, got to have it, that's the thing. So this is really, we've dealt with some, uh, you know, mobility stuff before, but never really went into a whole entire job thinking uh, everything has a purpose. So uh, this was new for us and it kind of took me back to a different approach kind of going into it um, in all regards. And so, um, uh, every little aspect of the house doors, including any other things there, we had to really research and do the diligence to figure out how things were going to work, not only work for us, but make it easy for Jason to use where he could, you know, come home, hit a button on his iPad that unlocks the door, then he could open the door, then he could turn on lights all from his iPad without having to, you know, find light switches and buttons and keys and all that stuff. So making it easy for him was priority. Um, as far as accomplishing those things, uh, there was a number of different items that we went with to, to get there. Uh, as far as the motorized doors themselves, uh, Jason and his uh, builder found their own door solution, the motor wise, um, and then we integrated it with contact closure wiring and a bunch of Crestron wireless pieces to get, get there and back. So, we had, and, excuse me. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, we, Whenever we had, um, whether it be the doors that were hard to, 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 you know, the door solution, everything is designed like the doors are designed to, those motors are designed to work with a door, but the, the makers of that door, they don't support integrating automation and things. So Isaac was able to back in, engineer that without support from really for the door maker or, I mean, and that flexibility and that ingenuity were, were so key. And I wanted to make sure that we did not feel like I was in a mini hospital. And we sure did not do that. Don't have that feel at all. But Isaac gives me a layer of security that I don't, that I wasn't even expecting to have, which is um, two things. Number one, I have caregivers in the morning and at night, but there's a portion of the day in which I don't. And um, I'm able to audibly contact uh, services if I need assistance with my voice. I can unlock the doors easily from my iPad. I, can, I really feel safe in my home. And also, I've had times in which Isaac is actually 
notif has notified me when my systems are down before I even knew it. So that feature is really nice. Like, hey, is everything all right? I noticed your internet and your, your electricity are messing up or things like that. So it gives me another layer of security that I, that I really put a lot of thankfulness into. Hmm. That's really interesting. Um, is that kind of, Isaac, is that kind of monitoring um, kind of standard for an installation or is that? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of different, I think, from dealer to dealer. Some, some dealers uh, charge a fee for that. Uh, for our customers here in the Metro, we offer monitoring for free. Um, and like he said, it kind of tells us, you know, I can say, hey, I, I saw your theater room go offline or the TV in the, in the family room go offline. Um, which usually helps me get things in line to be there to fix it or help fix it remotely um, before he needs it. So um, that helps in, in a lot of regards. So, All right. Yeah, no, I, I was figuring that this would be um, something that's, you know, kind of like a nice to have for a lot of people. But, um, yeah. you know, as Jason was saying, in this situation, it is definitely um, kind of more of a uh, almost like a mandatory thing. And it really helps kind of keep that peace of mind. Absolutely. It really does. Um, so I guess, well, we, we, we were kind of talking about the doors a little bit a while back, but um, would you say that those were probably like the major hurdle in the the design of the um, the smart home? Or can you think of anything else that might have uh, posed like a significant challenge for you guys? I, as far on my end, um, the doors uh kind of a challenge to integrate on my end he jason like he mentioned didn't want a hospital feel where you walk up to a door there's a big button on the side that you got to tap to open up so uh i had to order we ordered together a lot of extra um basically rf transmitters to hook them up to my system so that from my system we could you know toggle each door independently um which then we could tie into a control system to allow him to do that so on his ipad he has a button for front door, side door and such to where he can just uh, toggle certain certain doors at a time. Uh, as far as other parts of the system there, I mean, really every part we laid out um, like we usually would for a normal home. And then it, we tweaked pretty much everything to Jason, to, to, I mean, to Jason's needs to, to work exactly how he would need it to. And and honestly, it wasn't it was wasn't one of those things where we did it all at the beginning and expected it to be 100 percent complete forever. We knew that as we finished it, that we're going to need to spend you know more time with him to figure out how he uses the house what his needs are in different places and we kind of tweaked it from there so um, yes yeah. and i also want to say how good isaac and his team were with regard to dealing with the you know nicholas the backbone of this of course is a reliable high-speed internet connection that's critical and so uh, i had a few uh, hiccups with a couple of providers and isaac was very key on helping me talk to the provider in a way I couldn't be like uh, dismissed or 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 not acknowledge that we had to have key really really good internet so that was key and all of these things these were a backbone but it was Isaac's ability to integrate and customize that brought it all full circle and for the first time in my life I can do things I could never do and I feel like I'm at home in my home, which I've never had before, not to this level, not anywhere close. That's that. And that's really, it's really great to hear. Um, one of the things I was actually going to ask, I had meant to ask it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, I figure we can probably uh, slip it in now um, is just the kind of what was the one thing that you would say you felt as though was lacking in just any regular home for you that um, technology was able to kind of bridge that gap and make it everything just right for you? A couple of things. Number one, the ability to use doors. Number one, the ability to open a door, go in the room, shut the door. The ability to utilize lighting. Uh, but, uh, utilize environmental controls to do things without help. And the second big thing would be the ability to utilize and feel safe in a uh, shower. Shower is a big deal when you're when you're quadriplegic, and uh, it's kind of funny because 
when I was searching for companies, I um, kept asking for this huge shower. And my inspiration, honestly, was that silly Kevin Hart movie called The Upside, in which Kevin Hart, the comedian, was caring for the quadriplegic guy. And the guy in the movie had this giant shower. So I kept telling my builder, I want to get as close as I can to that shower. And really, there wasn't many, there weren't many products, still aren't out there that do something like that was fictionalized in this movie. So we did find one product and uh, got installed and got, as it got hooked up to the Wi Fi. And um, finally, for the first time in my life, I don't feel like I'm uh, courting death with my daily hygiene routine. And it sounds like I might be exaggerating, but let me tell you, the shower is the most dangerous thing that the disabled person does regularly. I mean, it's, and, and it really has changed for me the uh, ability to look forward to that and, and enjoy that. And just moving about my home and being able to open and close doors and feel safe and feel like I'm not in a place that I'm trying to make work. I'm in a place that was designed for me. My whole world, I live in a world that was designed for people who walk. And so I'm always looking from a different perspective. But when I'm home now, I feel like I'm in a place designed for me, exactly for me. That's that's really great to hear. And I'm glad that uh, you and Isaac were able to work together to make that happen. It seems like there is a lot that, you know, just talking about accessibility in the first place, um, there's a lot of stuff that people generally kind of gravitate towards in terms of that, but there's a lot of stuff that you've mentioned where, yeah. you know, it, it really takes that kind of... Um, it really takes somebody who's been experiencing it all their life to kind of put it into perspective for people. And so that's really great that you two were able to work together and, on and that. And the end user, the, the customer really needs to take great care with who they choose to work with because I found through my interview process that most, most installers, not knocking anyone, are just really out of the box, plug stuff in and go. Where Isaac could sit down and go, we can do something here that nobody's done before. And that's what I had to have. And I got to give kudos, my builder, Carrie Jones Holmes, that was my builder who doesn't know anything about tech. He was willing to do whatever he could to help us have the supplies we needed to make this work. So it was definitely a team effort. And uh, I'm so proud of how it turned out because mm -hmm. people with disabilities, Nicholas, are not thought of as a customer that all that would want something like this, but we I want to change that narrative. When I was at Thursday evening, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma at a comedy concert for Joe Rogan. And as I looked down from my handicapped seat, I I said to my friend, I think it's so sad that these concerts don't offer accessible seating at all price levels. The high price levels rarely have seating options for the disabled. So I want to change that narrative and say, hey, if you work hard, if you forge a career, you should be able to have the luxuries to, to live your life in comfort and enjoyment. And I want to be that example. And with Isaac's help and the team involved, we've, we've, we've done that and I'm very proud. I think I think you guys have set a great example. I mean, even though it would be great to be able to like have a um, home tour right now, but even just like with what I see behind you, it seems like not only is your house, um, you know, fully functional, as you say, but it's also just bursting with character behind you. Yes, I, I wanted that. Uh, not to delve too much into my personal life, but I got divorced in 2018, and that's when I started the project of this house, and I wanted to make it my own, and I always joke with my friends that I'm going to make the whole house a giant man cave, and I've really done that, and I always tell when when uh, I have visitors or my mom or someone will ask me about a girlfriend, I always say, Mom, if I get a girlfriend, one day I'm going to look up, and somewhere on my wall is going to say, live, laugh, love. So I'm always on the lookout that nobody hangs a live, laugh, love sign on my wall because it's all a giant man cave. I'm a big sports collector. Maybe we could 
set up a tour somehow. I can't do it today. I don't have a mechanism to do a video tour, but but uh, yeah, it's it's quite the home, and we can get you. You probably seen the 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 spec sheet that Creston did that gave some shots, but really, I want to be comfortable. I want to feel like I'm in my own place. I don't want to feel like I'm in a hospital. And like my caregivers, when I hire them, I say, look, I want to call you when I need you. Here's your suite in the house. And otherwise, I want to feel like I'm at home by myself as a single guy. And I want to use as many things as I can to, to enjoy my home. And I said, give, he gave me a a, a lot of tools to work with, a lot of tools to work with to make myself feel at home. And also, can't say enough about uh, uh, Isaac and the team because they're always available when something is acting quirky or acting, you know, like it, like, you know, they're all, they're the customer support is like nothing I've ever seen. It really is. And that's key. That's key is that relationship. I mean, we're almost, we're, we've become great friends throughout this endeavor. That's great to hear. Um, I, and one of the things, one of the, the, the pieces of tech that I guess, um, you know, like you said, I, I looked over the, uh, the, the sheets from Crestron and I saw one of the pivotal pieces of tech that I saw in all of this. And it just relates back to that accessibility is the, um, the iPad, just that kind of whole source of control right at your fingertips. Um, yeah. Yeah, the iPad app is, uh, and again, if I, I can't say enough, if I would have worked with another provider, I might have ended up with some version of iPad app, but it would have been it would have been nearly as automated and customized to what I needed. But I, whether we turn the lights on or or uh, do the bathroom, the audio video stuff, um, it's just a touch away, and uh, it really, really changes the whole game. It's just one more example of the integration aspect because everybody knows the iPad's great, but does everybody know how the iPad can be integrated into something like this? I don't think so, but Isaac had that vision and together we made this work and I just seamlessly flowed between rooms. Uh, whatever I need to get done, I can get it done and, and start my day right, so. And so Isaac, I'm assuming you were able to put uh, all of the controls onto the iPad or is there um, kind of any, is there, is it like, I, I guess what I'm asking is like, is it essentially a universal remote for the entire house the way you have it set up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the Crestron system is the brain. Um, it's in one of the, it's in the IT closet there at his house. Um, but uh, reaching out to subsystems, we can control just about everything. We kind of stepped back when we started the project and thought, you know, hey, if Jason's going to bed or coming to the house or, or going to the theater, we want to have flexibility to do everything in that room, everything throughout the house, all from the iPad, regardless of where he's at, or if he's away, do stuff at the house or in bed, let a caregiver in at the front door. He needs to be able to do all that at all times. So uh, we've literally integrated just about every aspect of the home um, that you can, um, from climate to door locks, to the garage doors, to uh, lighting, audio, video, uh, distribution systems. I mean, about as far as you can take it, we took it there um, and utilizing the new Crestron home system um, gave us flexibility to integrate to all those things and keep a very nice and simple user interface on his iPad. Um, there's a bunch of benefits with the new Crestron home system that allows um, us to remotely uh, make small changes and this and that. Uh, whereas with the older and uh, custom Crestron programming, you would have to, uh, you know, make changes in software, connect to the system, upload it um, for him to see changes on his end. Uh, with the with the new home system, we're allowed to to make on the fly changes that that uh, makes things really easy for me servicing and, and troubleshooting with him if he has any issues. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's a really great system, and I, I think it turned out really great. I love this. I don't think I've mentioned this, but I also love the security feature. I can arm and disarm an alarm. I can look at several cameras placed throughout my property in a moment's notice from any screen in the home, including my iPad. So it really gives me a sense of security that I just never imagined having. You know, it's really nice. Yeah, it sounds... Uh... 
I mean, it really just sounds amazing. Uh, all of the technology that kind of went into it and the fact that everything was able to be set up so seamlessly. In all honesty, that's kind of like uh, almost the dream of what a lot of people think of when they think of smart home. It's that seamless connectivity just throughout every aspect of the house, except obviously you, Jason and Isaac have taken it to a completely new level with even making it so that the doors are automated. The, uh, you can control the showers and all that stuff through oh, yeah. um, a simple yeah. interface. Um, you have to have a company willing to take it on. And that was surprisingly hard to find. And Voyager was like, not only do we want the job, we want to, embrace it and, and go even beyond what you originally wanted that you didn't even realize yet that can help you. So I can't say enough about the integration between Voyager and Crestron and my builder and we all, we all got there for sure. So I guess um, I don't want to take too long out of your guys' time, um, but one of the things that I wanted to ask was, and I'll ask this to the both of you, I'll start off with Jason first. Um, Jason, what is your favorite piece of technology out of the entire setup that you that you love for this house? Well, to answer that, I, we have to roll, roll, I say roll away or walk away, as you may want to look at it, but I'm, I'm really a bit of a, of a, of a audio video file. So if I really had to tell you my favorite piece, it would be the theater that I designed for me. It was, it's my favorite piece. It's the room I would die in. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite room. But, but beyond that, it's just the ability to move uh, about the home and, uh, and feel like I'm in complete control. Because I, I like control. It's my wife divorced. <laughs> so I like being able to... Uh, have control of my home, but that theater is, is uh, I, we, we're talking about accessibility, but I can design a masterpiece in my AV theater room that is just uh, mind boggling as far as what it produces. He, he blew me away in that room as well. And uh, I told him I wanted to uh, feel like I moved into, like I have rolled into a miniature movie theater, including carpet, walls, everything. And he nailed every aspect. And I will never forget the John Wick demo that he did when we were finishing up the job. And I thought, yes, this is this is what I want. So and I had also had no idea that the pandemic was about to happen. So it's been nice to be able to watch films. And also as a person with a disability, you know, you want to watch, enjoy your your A V with with minimal help. So I've got like a Blu-ray player that I can reach. I've got multiple streaming options uh, for high-end audio and Dolby Atmos sound. So although that's my favorite room by a million miles, uh, the home is really an experience because it's truly an accessible home that I don't think existed. And with the help of Voyager and Isaac especially, we got there. Oh, that's great. Um, so Isaac, the same question to you. What is your favorite part of this project? Uh, well, I'm actually probably on the opposite end of Jason. <laughs> we do a lot of theater rooms and stuff like that for just about every client. So uh, yeah. mine would probably have to be be the Crestron system, uh, specifically that one there, because it's it's like I mentioned, really the first time we kind of had to take a step back and a different approach to it. It, it was no longer about throw all the money at it, whatever you can fit in there, make it cool type thing. It was more of a, this guy is going to rely on this to live his everyday life. So what do we need to do to, to make it uh, seamless for him? So uh, my favorite part really honestly was just integrating all the different subsystems in the house. Like we went over to all be intuitive on one app. We do a little bit here on there on some houses, uh, locks and, and climate and stuff like that but we've never went as far as we did there. Um, like he mentioned, security, door locks, doors themselves, uh, climate, lighting, audio, video. I mean, every single part of the house. I mean, if you walk into the house, it's, it's harder to find something not integrated to the system than it is. Uh, is. So uh, that would be my favorite part of the house, really. And let me add, I think I said that great because if I could not shower safely, if I could not live safely, I would not enjoy my theater room. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's really about the accessibility and about 
uh, Nicholas, when I move about the city, I live in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. When I move about the city, everywhere I go, I'm reminded that I'm disabled, whether it be someone seeing me in a store or something or having trouble accessing a restaurant, whatever. But when I get home, finally, I can can drop that cloak of frustration, if you'll allow me that, and really be home and really relax. And I've never had that that ability before. And there's just not companies out there wanting to go to that level, except for Voyager in conjunction with Crestron. And I'm so thankful that we got this done. That's that's just really what anybody wants in a home. They want to be able to feel comfortable in it. And so, you know, I've said it so many times already on this uh, pro- podcast, but it's great that you guys were able to not only come together and made a home that worked, but made a home that worked perfectly for you. That I think that's the big thing here. It really is. All right. Well, it was great getting a chance to talk with you guys. It was great being able to um, learn more about the house and the process that set everything up. It was really wonderful. And so um, I guess before we sign off, you know, I usually like to uh, give the people that I talk to a- an extra opportunity to add anything that, you know, we might have missed just because of time constraints. So, um, Jason, I'll let you uh, start off with the uh, final words. Well, it comes down to what is what is possible. Most people with severe disabilities have low expectations on our quality of life because we haven't seen a chance at what is possible. So when people open their mind and begin to, to set their goals higher, uh, instead of I hope I survive, which is often the, the, the way we have to live our lives as people with severe disabilities, when those goals, those bars are raised, we'll see more and more of this. And I think whole home access can be a beautiful thing. And if it's designed right, it's designed well. If you can let me borrow your name on that. And Isaac helped me do that. And I hope in the future that more and more people with severe disabilities push themselves to their goals so they can enjoy life uh, to their fullest as well. Because through quality employment, through quality training and initiatives and getting with the right companies. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to live life to its fullest without regard to your physical limitations. All right. And Isaac? I'm kind of going to piggyback off what Jason said. I think that uh, if it, it's not so much as uh, people don't, don't, can't afford the system or what be or whatever. I I don't think most people know what's available to them. Um, uh, Being immobilized in certain areas doesn't require, I mean, you to live any different. I think with certain technologies we have now, we can make uh, any home as comfortable for you as it would be for me. So um, I think just getting getting information out to people about what's available and and how far you can take technology these days to make the home uh, cater to you and your needs um, would be, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do this for you and, and this podcast to try to help get the word out. But yeah, it's definitely, um, I think if more people knew what was available to them, um, uh, we could do a lot more for people. So, And I think, yeah, for uh, just to kind of, again, piggyback off of you guys, um, I think this entire this entire home setup and project in general has just been a great example as to, you know, as you said, what's available on the, not just what's available on the market, but how, you know, you can kind of take what's available on the market and rework it into these unique ways that can specifically cater to specific needs uh, for people. It's one of those things that, you know, um, most people every day, they wouldn't really think about needing that. And so, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the times uh, when it comes down to actually designing uh, these systems for um, disabled people and, you know, Jason, as you mentioned earlier, um, the aging population, usually it's not the aging population or people with disabilities that are designing those. And so it's always great to be and so it's always great to be able to kind of have that collaboration be going on where it's like, 
you know, like I, like I said earlier, being able to kind of get down into that situation and being I, able to see through their eyes. A great example. Uh, I had to go on a work trip a couple of weeks ago and I had to spend overnight in a hotel in a big uh, casino. And I used to look forward to that because the hotel would be a level above my accessibility level at home. And this time I thought, how poorly designed is this hotel room? I don't think I can function because I'm used to my wonderful home. I thought everywhere I looked at, like something was poorly designed and uh, because of the level now that I have at home, it's just beyond um, what what's usually done because you hit it, Nicholas. Usually when people are designing, they use the Americans with Disabilities Act as their guide, uh, which is of course a great guide, but remember, and I hope you'll listen and understand this, all these disability laws are actually floors. They're not ceilings. They're minimum requirements. And almost always builders build to that minimum requirement. But we didn't do that. We went way beyond uh, because we know that those laws are, are floors, not ceilings. And so although it may have changed by enjoyment of vacations, I would not leave my home to trade my home for anything because it's wonderful. Well, that's beautifully said. So once again, it was great getting a chance to speak with the both of you. And it was, I hope everybody uh, that was able to tune in for this, um, you know, kind of learns a lesson from this in what can be done when it comes to designing a smart home and how a smart home can be um can provide convenience, but, you know, could provide convenience on just such a much higher level than what one would expect. All right. Well, I'll let you guys get going and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit the like button on your way out and also subscribe to DesignWell's YouTube channel and hit the bell icon if you want to stay informed of any new updates. Alternatively, you can find any of our podcasts over on Apple or Spotify and leave a review there.